United States District Court, Southern District of Florida, Miami Division, Class Action Complaint, Jury Trial Demanded, Edward Garrison on behalf of themselves and others similarly situated plaintiffs versus Kevin Pathrath, Graham Stephan, Andre Zeek, Jasper Singh, Brian Jung, Jeremy LaFauve, Tom Nash, Ben Armstrong, Erica Kohlberg, Creators Agency, Defendants. And guys, this is really happening. All those scammer YouTubers, all those FTX pumper YouTubers, scams. I really don't like these people. I can go on and on about how much I don't like them, but they're getting sued. It's a class action. I want to read through it with you guys. And uh, it's really happening. So uh, get your popcorn ready. We're going to read through this thing together. Class action complaint and demand for jury trial. Plaintiffs file this complaint on behalf of themselves and other similarly situated U.S. and non-U.S. FTX consumers. So we're going uh, international on this one against defendants who are the influencers, right? All the name ones up there you guys can see who promoted assisted in and or actively participated in FTX Trading Limited, uh, FTX Trading at West uh, Realm Shire Services, uh, collectively FTX Indices, offer and sale of unregistered securities. So we're looking at security stuff here. Um, let's keep going on here. Introduction. The FTX disaster is the largest financial fraud in U.S. history. The former FTX CEO, Sam Bankman fried is facing numerous criminal charges and the new CEO, uh, who helped uh, wind down Enron, concluded that this fraud was worse than Enron. Billions of dollars have been stolen from investors across the globe. And uh, you can see here, FTX was a centralized cryptocurrency platform which specialized in derivatives and leveraged products. It filed for bankruptcy and protection in November 2022 and will be involved in federal bankruptcy proceedings for many years. Wow, many years. There is no guarantee that any of the victims will uh, be able to see any recovery from these those proceedings. Uh, okay, so this is sort of why you would sue someone because if, if, you, if you don't think necessarily you're going to get money from bankruptcy, right, you just basically do like a civil suit kind of thing. This action may be one of in, uh, what this action may be one of the only avenues for any of the victims to recover any of their damages. So basically they're saying here, if you're like a retail investor and, and you're worried you're not going to get any money from, you know, the bankruptcy proceedings, jump into this class action if you want to get back at these YouTubers. That's what it's saying here, basically. Plaintiffs bring this action against YouTube and social media financial influencers and promoters who shared financial advice and actively promoted FTX and its yield-bearing accounts. So they're going after people who actually promote FTX and the yield-bearing accounts. I think this is a big one here, the YBAs. To their millions of followers through FTX paid defendants handsomely to push its brand and encourage their followers to invest, defenders did not disclose the nature and scope of their sponsorship and or the endorsement deals, payment and compensation, nor conduct adequate, if any, due diligence. So we're charging these people that basically they didn't say that they're getting paid necessarily, how much they're getting paid. Um, and uh, also to that, uh, you know, they, they didn't do their due diligence. And I think this is a big one because essentially they're, they're you know, these people are, are pre pretending uh, or, or however you want to put it. I mean, these influencer people are giving financial advice, right? That turned out basically to be a Ponzi. Um, let's see what else this thing says here. With the rise of products of internet and social media, a new multi-billion dollar cottage industry of influencers has been created. Evidence has now been covered that the reveals influencers played a major role in disaster. And in fact, FTX could not have arisen to such great heights without the massive impact of these influencers. So uh, we're basically saying that uh, the FTX YouTube pumpers are a central core to making FTX essentially steal your money. And I would agree. I don't disagree at all. Um, who hyped the deceptive FTX platform for undisclosed payments ranging from tens of thousands of dollars to multi-million dollar bribes. Oh God. Let's read that again. Who hyped the deceptive FTX platform for undisclosed payments ranging from tens of thousands of dollars to multi-million dollar bribes. So we're, we're talking about quite a bit of money around here. Indeed, the most searched companies on the internet today are cryptocurrency brands. According to the NBA 2021, the 22 Marketing and Partnerships Annual Report by Sponsor United, the cryptocurrency industry has a higher search volume during the year than the entire alcohol and beverage industry. It is paramount to understand that the Florida state law claims as asserted in this action do not require reliance or deceit. Interesting, do not require reliance or deceit. The law merely requires the named plaintiffs 
and this is the people with the YouTubers, uh, and eventually the certified class to have suffered damages as a result of purchasing an unregistered security. So they were trying to get them on unregistered securities here. And that was promoted by the defendants for their financial benefit and the financial benefit of FTX. And this has actually been an issue um, with, with these kind of things is like you're promoting, um, you know, unregistered securities. Uh, this is actually, this is this would be SEC kind of stuff. Let's see what else we got here. The reality is that anyone around the world with a computer can now be a promoter. Many of these paid FTX influencers, right, uh, have since asked for forgiveness because many of these influencers rely mainly on their alleged uh, independence and impartiality in attracting people to join their fan base. I think this is interesting. Their alleged independence, because the, because the reality is, guys, this is this is where I think there's a where they have a case is that remember all these YouTubers are working together, and it was not disclosed that they were all at the same agency. And if you've been following my channel, you will know I was the first one, and I loudly, loudly said that all these people are working together. I was very clear on that. You guys remember this? If you follow my channel, I'll put links if you don't remember. Um, this is really interesting. Okay. Um, this action is brought to hold liable those influencers who specifically violated the law under these acts and will serve as a present to warn and guide influencers in the future. So we're saying um, you broke the law and we want to make an example out of you. State and federal regulators have been required to quickly modify and adjust all of the changing sources of promoters and marketers, okay? Starting with the sponsors on radio, then television, and motion pictures in today. So it's kind of saying like as the, you know, medium communication changes, um, so it does need the law and stuff like that. To the wild west of the internet, the number of companies that specialize in promoting on social media have skyrocketed according to studies that was aged 18 to 34, more likely to uh, build an interest in investment specifically from social media instead of traditional new websites. Um, I think this is an important point because um, sometimes, uh, if you guys know, we got to fight a Spencer over this, but He'll try to make the case and they'll try to make the case that, oh, you know, uh, sports stars and stuff are doing it and therefore they're more important. But I would make the case, honestly, that someone on YouTube telling you every single day that you need to be buying, you know, uh, crypto and NFTs on FTX. This is what Graham and all those guys were doing every single day. They were saying, oh, it's the best platform, safe and all that stuff. Um, that, that sort of parasocial relationship uh, to 18 to 30 year old, uh, 34 year olds is very, very influential. Let's see what else they say here. Both the 11th and 9th courts have already received uh, recently entered opinions that specifically social media posts and mass communication in cryptocurrency context made the internet exactly like the ones issued in these claims are sufficient to state a claim for soliciting a sale of unregistered securities. So basically what they're saying here is that if, if you're like, you know, pushing stuff on social media, uh, people can sue you for that. And um, they're using the examples of, I guess, looks like someone's uh, sued Cardone Capital. That's Pino versus Cardone Capital. Another one, which is Wilds versus BitConnect. I believe this is an older crypto scam. I'm not as familiar with the uh, Card Cardone Capital, but I know he's a scammer, so, so I'm not shocked. Um, and uh, the Ar Ar uh, Arcaro versus Parks. We'll see what else they say. Numerous state courts, including Florida, have also interpreted their own state security laws, such as the Florida Securities and Investor Pro uh, Protection Act. So again, it uh, looks like Florida has you know certain laws on, on how we do securities. And, and earlier, remember, they stated unregistered securities. So let's see what, what else we're going here. Um, to go even further and provide broader protection for investors, right? This is about protecting retail um, from aiding and abetting the sale of unregistered securities again. And then those yield bearing accounts, the YDAs. Uh, because the S, uh, FS uh, SIPA, so that's your Florida Investor Protection, uh, as title makes it clear, was designed to protect the public from fraudulent and deceptive practices in the sale of marketing of securities. So um, essentially, <laughs> we're saying that uh, these YouTubers are fraudulent and deceptive. And then they're referring to Mel versus Office financial regulations, and a different one here. Literally overnight, plaintiffs uh, lost their assets held in their YBAs on the FTX trading platform as FTX imploded, imploded and filed a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, basically saying, you know, people uh, who are suing the YouTubers lost their money on this stuff, is what it's saying. And then uh, there's a bankruptcy petition in Delaware on the emergency basis. In the months following FTX filing, its founders, including SBF, were charged with numerous counts of fraud and money laundering, and among things, as of the date, this uh, filing at least uh, three of SBS courts fully guilty to conspiracy and other criminal charges related to FTX scheme to defraud investors. So again, other people have been um, uh, uh, pleading guilty. What else we got here? FTX fraud scheme was designed to take advantage of investors from across the globe, including specifically in Florida, which is true, actually. Uh, Florida was a heavy uh, targeting retail investors in Florida crypto stuff who saw it while it was represented to be a safe platform to make their investments in a emergency crypto industry. The scheme resulted in FTX investors collectively sustaining 
billions of dollars in damages. Parties, the plaintiffs. So this is, um, uh, I'm not going to go through all the plans. You guys can read here, but these are essentially the people say that that they got hurt. Um, and that these are just your kind of regular person, your 20-year-old kid here. Yeah, 21-year-old, 21-year-old. Um, these are kids, right? Essentially what we're making. Like, yeah, they're all 21. And then the defendants, um, the defendants are the digital creators. So these are the the YouTubers uh, who provide investor in information um, and advice on an array of topics including cryptocurrency generally, FTX and the YouTube channels. YouTube is the second largest search engine, which generates content that is accessible across the globe. And uh, here's some more. Defendants all admittedly endorse and promote the sale of FTX and YBS, so they're not disputing that, right? We all know they endorse of it. None of them disclose, oh, this is a big one. None of them disclose in any of their YouTube videos or, or, or other social media posts that they were paid hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. This is a big claim actually here, guys. Millions of dollars by FTX and profit from the sale of FTX YBAs in a clear violation of F SEC and FTC and various federal and state regulations. So uh, this is this is your claims right here is, uh, you know, it's interesting because I'm just talking to you guys out loud. Um, when when we know that, and I've, I've covered this on the channel, when YouTubers uh, basically pump penny stocks, it'll say, if they are going to disclose it, they'll say, hey, I got paid 20 grand, I got paid 30 grand, that kind of stuff. The FTX guys um, and, and gals uh, never disclose the amount that they were paid. So we can get them on that kind of stuff, possibly. Defendant, Kevin Pathrat, the YouTube star with 1.58 million uh, followers to his real estate and financial tip channel, Meet Kevin, was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen of the resident of Ventura, California. Defendant, Graham Steffitt, a YouTube star with 4.1 million subscribers to YouTube pages, was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen of the resident of Los Angeles, Nevada. Defendant, Andre Zeek, a YouTube star with 2.2 million subscribers and his YouTube pages, was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen the resident of Las, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, defendant, Jasper Singh, a YouTube star with 1.4 million subscribers uh, to his YouTube channel Minority Mindset, was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen resident of Detroit, Michigan. Defendant, Brian June, a YouTube star with 1.3 million subscribers to his YouTube channel was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen and resident of Washington, D.C. Jeremy LaFove, defendant, a YouTube star with 700,000 subscribers to his YouTube page, financial education, was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen, the resident of Las Vegas, Nevada. A lot of these guys live in Vegas, right? The gambling capital. You guys know that. Defendant, Tom Nash, YouTube star with 280,000 subscribers, to his YouTube page was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen and resident of Sydney, Australia. Wow. And it's funny because like, if you guys don't know this, Tom Nash, he tries to hide his name and location. That is a fake name, which is kind of interesting actually, to be honest, that they're, they're you know, naming him Tom Nash. That's an interesting one. And for those of you who are lawyers, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, would you use Tom Nash in the lawsuit? That's very interesting, but they're saying he's in Australia. I wouldn't have guessed that. Defendant, Ben Armstrong. A YouTube star with uh, more than 1.5 million subscribers on the YouTube page was paid to endorse FTX and is a citizen resident of Atlanta, Georgia. And then we got Erica Kohlberg, right? She's one of the founders of, of Creators Agency. Defendant Erica Kohlberg is upon uh, information and belief a founder of Defendant uh, Creators Agency LLC and is currently identified on Creator Agency website at, uh, as one of its finance business creators with 18 million social media followers. So I guess they don't know where he is. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, they don't know where he is. That's, that's real interesting. There's no, there's no, doesn't say where she is. Maybe they don't know. Defending Creators Agency is a talent a management firm and digital network, uh, which promote FTX upon information and belief. Creators Agency is organized and existing under state laws of Delaware and a principal place of business in Tokyo, Japan. Wow. 